about three years ago, I was sitting in my living room trying to metasploit my virtual machine, not knowing what the hell I was doing. I had this drive to learn and get good at the skill, but 99% of the videos on YouTube required you to have some kind of like knowledge or experience with cyber, which at the time I did not have. So most of the time I was confused as fuck, not understanding anything. If you're in that position right now, this video is perfect for you. I'm going to explain it in such a simple, easy way and give you resources at the end so there is basically no way that you could be confused. By the way, this video is for educational purposes only. What is hacking? My explanation for what hacking is, is basically understanding a system so well that you know holes in it and that you can exploit them. Now there are many different types of hacking and I'm just gonna go over some simple ones before we start. So the first is computer system hacking. And these are different methods that hackers use to get unauthorized access into someone's computer. So this includes stuff like rats and key loggers. And they can look through your files, look through your webcam, look at your screen, look at your passwords. There's a lot they can do. To prevent this, you should have an antivirus running. But some of these are viruses are made so that they bypass the antivirus and in that case you need to use the best antivirus your head don't download that free robux generator you should be able to tell what's too good to be true but now this runs a little deeper with rce exploits rce stands for remote code execution and these exploits some of the more advanced ones what happens is that you don't have to download any file you don't have to do anything, but if your system is vulnerable to an exploit, so you haven't been doing your Windows updates for a while, something like that, a hacker can gain access to your system without needing you to download anything. And that's scary, so that's definitely worth learning about. Now next is phishing, and this is basically when attackers send out emails or messages that have a link. And when you go on that link, you'll see that it's a login page for Facebook or Google, but these login pages are actually fake. They're replicas that the attackers made of the official websites, but when you put in your username and password and click login, it actually sends the username and password to the attacker and then forwards you to the actual site so it looks legit. Now there are many ways to catch a phishing site, but the main one is the URL bar. The URL bar is always going to have something sketchy or something a little off with it, either the subdomain or, or something's just going to be off. It's not going to be the official website, so that's a dead giveaway. And of course, don't be clicking on sketchy links. Now next is social engineering, and this is when an attacker uses persuasion tactics to manipulate people into downloading something, running something, could be a rat, could be a keylogger, maybe logging into a website, but the social engineering part is that they, they manipulate you. So a simple example is that imagine someone adds you on Discord from like a mutual server, and I don't know, you play a few games and they pretend to be your friend and you're getting close with them, and after a few weeks they casually drop a link or a file and um, you trust them, right? So they social engineered you, they won your trust. You run that file and boom, whatever they wanted from you, they now have. And if the attacker is targeting some big company or corporation, it could even get as complicated as them pretending to be an employee. The last one I'm gonna tell you about is web hacking. And this is when attackers gain unauthorized access or get private information from a website or server. Some examples of this are cross-site scripting and SQL injection. You can think of it as PC hacking, but just for websites and with different methods most of the time. Now there are many forms of hacking, but this really short guide will teach you about PC system hacking, computer system hacking, which is what my channel is mainly focused on. So in this video, I'm just gonna explain some networking basics, starting with what is an IP address. So an IP address is a sequence of numbers separated by dots that's uniquely assigned to different devices. Now you've definitely heard of IPs, whether it's through Omegle videos or some skid sending you a Grabify link. Those IPs that you've heard of are called public IPs, and they're basically IPs assigned to your router from your ISP. Public IPs are open to the internet and can be accessed from anywhere around the world. In those Omegle videos, for example, people's public IPs are being pulled, and from that they can get the general location of where the router is. Now on to private IPs. Private IPs are assigned to different devices inside of a network. So like a phone, a laptop, a TV, all in one network. Private IPs are assigned to them by the router. So it's not the ISP assigning them anymore, it's the router. The router assigns IPs to devices inside of a network. And why does it do this? So let's say for example, you're on your laptop and you go on YouTube, youtube.com. It's not your laptop directly talking to the internet. So you send a request saying, okay, I want the data from youtube.com. You tell that to your router, your router, okay, I'm gonna go get the data from youtube.com because your router has the public IP. Your private IP can't actually access the internet directly. It has to go through the router first and your private IP gets converted into the public IP, 
when you're browsing, for example. So anyway, your router gets the use of .com data and it doesn't know which device to send it back to. It sees that there's a phone, that there's a TV, laptop, whatever, and it has to know who to give the data back to. But that also means you can't get someone's location with their private IP address. That also means that two people can have the same IP address if they're on different networks. Now you can't have the same public IP address. Two routers cannot have the same public IP address. But inside of those routers, the private IPs can be the same on different networks. But two private IPs can't be the same on one network. Because then, for example, the router gets some data and it can't send it back to two devices, right? They both send different requests and it has to know which one specifically to send it back to. An analogy that I like is that routers are like houses and the IP address is like the house address of the house. And there are people inside of the house and those people's names are the private IPs. In a city, for example, many people have the same name, but no two houses have the same house address. Okay, so now moving on to ports. Maybe you've heard of this, maybe you haven't, but it's pretty simple. Remember that analogy about the house? Where the router is like the house and the house address is basically the public IP address? Well, you can think of ports of doors going into the house. So ports is actually how they communicate between each other. And a port is just a number from 1 to 65,000, which identifies a network protocol. An example is port 80, which is used for the HTTP protocol. So just like a website. Now ports aren't only for public IP addresses. Private IPs also use ports. But nowadays, almost every single device has a firewall. What a firewall does is basically lock the doors. So people don't access random ports. It's like a stranger just walking into your house, for example. You don't want that to happen, so you lock the door. That's what a firewall does. Okay, now I'll tell you a story about how not knowing these things before messed me up. So let's go back three years. I just woke up, turned on my computer, and joined my online class. Which I barely paid any attention to because... I was trying to hack my friend. I told him that I've been learning cyber and that I can control his PC all the way from my house. So he laughs and he's like, okay, show me, do it, let's see it. We were on a Discord call and he was sharing his screen and I somehow convinced him to run IP config on command prompt, which is a command that basically shows you your private IP address and he was screen sharing. So I saw his private IP address, I quickly typed it down and then I opened remote desktop on Windows, which is basically used to remotely control other computers, put in his IP, click connect and for the next hour, this is what I saw. And I didn't know why. I really thought that there was something going on with the Wi-Fi. Problem number one, he was on a different network and I had his private IP address. I could only access that private IP if I was on the same network as him. But I was on a completely different network, so it was basically useless. Problem number two, even if I was on the same network as him, remote desktop uses port 3389. So if you want to connect to someone, they need port 3389 enabled through their firewall. And I'm willing to assume that he didn't go into the firewall settings and enable port 3389 for me. So I was frustrated, confused, and ended up looking like a dumbass. So learn from my mistakes. If you're still confused about anything I talked about, I strongly recommend you check out PowerCert animated videos. I'll drop some links in the description. He basically goes over everything I went over except in more detail and his animations really help. So if you're still kind of confused and you need a little bit of clarification, I strongly recommend you check him out. Anyway, let me know if this helped you. Because if this video is actually useful to a bunch of guys, I might make a part two, part three, kind of make this a series where I explain the basics. So when you're watching my other videos, you're not as confused. And yeah, I know it's fun to learn and stuff, but learning cyber, if you're interested and passionate about it, is actually really important. It's all over the internet how in the next like decade, there will be 30% more cybersecurity job positions. And of course, people aren't learning that fast. There's going to be a lot of demand for this. So it's an opportunity to do something you're actually interested about and passionate. You get paid good money for doing it. And you help businesses save thousands and maybe even millions. When their information isn't getting leaked, they're not getting DDoS, etc. So keep that in mind. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Join the Discord server if you're not there already. And I'll see you next time.